now when when you build a DAC, the you know kind of the heart of the DAC, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but this this is at least how I think about it. Mm -hmm. Really, is that you know you have all of this equipment and your inputs and outputs and all that kind of stuff, but at the heart you have the 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 silicon that's actually doing the digital to analog. Correct. And there are different versions or flavors and brands of chip that you can uh, select. So could you tell us a little bit about the the chip that is used in your DAG? And why you elected to go with that technology as opposed to like a Burr Brown or somebody else, right? Okay. So yeah. What, so what's, first, what's the thinking there? To be honest, it's a fun thing. So uh, you mentioned Burr Brown. That is actually where I started out uh, to build DAC designs with. Uh, the Burr Brown okay. chipset is a very well known. Uh, they were pioneering into the uh, multi-bit DACs. Uh, they were one mm -hmm. of the, I'd say very first ones that generated the 24-bit DACs um, and just outstanding DAC chips. However, uh, a couple of new brands came along and uh, one of them is ESS and they happen to have their design uh, headquarters in Kelowna, of all places. Uh, and that's oh, wow. exactly where I live. So um, at that point, of course, it starts to become logical uh, to just yeah run into each other. So one day... Uh, some guys from a spin-off from ESS uh, called Resonescence Labs came into my assembly shop, which is where I'm sitting here. This is actually where all this Infigo equipment gets built and born. Uh, and they asked for their DAC if I could build the first 100 boards. So, well, I told them, okay, I am into DAC design and into uh, amplifier design myself. So we just can maybe collaborate a little bit. So that's what we actually started to do. So they built their first DAX. Uh, they were built in this shop here. And um, they more or less were technical people rather than audiophiles. Well, I'm an mm -hmm. audiophile at heart. I'm mildly passionate about this, if you can hear. And um, they A asked for some help with uh, the high-end audio shows because, yeah, they were really not into that too much. Uh, their idea was also just to... Yeah, put on a couple of high-res uh, files and then just let people listen to it, which is okay, of course, but there's so much more that makes these shows interesting than just meets the ear. So right. I started consulting for Resonescence Labs, uh, did that for many years until in 2019, unfortunately, they had to pull the plug. And that is essentially also why Infigo Audio was born. I just knew like, okay, so if I'm not going to do anything with Resonescence anymore, then I just need to bring this amplifier to the market myself. And that's how Infigo Audio actually came to be. So now oh, back great. to the, the DAC chip. So uh, it's kind of logical if you're so close to ESS that you can have good information. Uh, I've worked with the engineers there uh, for quite a few years. So I have a lot of insight into how you can build a very, very good DAC with that particular chipset. And uh, that is the sole reason uh, that I chose this chip. It's a chip that's been chosen by a lot of other high-end brands, uh, and the results are various. Some people build very, very good sounding DACs with them. Some other brands build, unfortunately, very bad sounding DACs with them. It's, it goes either way, you know? There's almost no like in between with these particular ES9038 chips. So the way that we do this, is by having a box full of power supplies. Every single sub-circuit in the DAC has their own ultra-linear power supply. So there's oh, wow. 15 different analog power supplies just to basically feed these sub-circuits around the DAC chips. It is super important to do so. And then there's class A little amplifiers around them for the output circuitry. Uh, that also helped a lot. They all, of course, have their own power supplies again. So essentially, the chipset is super important, but I would say the power supplies that drive everything around it is equally important. So this, you know, this brings up a, a good question that a lot of people have asked, have posed to me, and uh, and I have my opinion. Um, and I'm curious if my opinion, and it sounds like it might match up with yours, but a lot of people will say. Or, or ask, when I'm looking for a DAC, what is the most important thing, right? Uh, because from, from, I think, a like an empirical point of view, a 
stack, they all should have the same output, right? So you have you have digital in and analog out. And at the output of that DAC, that analog signal, if you look at any DAC, those should match up, right? If if you want to stay faithful to that to that sound, it should be the same. And a job of a DAC should be to faithfully uh, take that digital input and turn it into the exact audio uh, analog output. However, that's not true, right? It, the implementation it's the same problem all over again. Yeah. It's yeah, the same it, problem that started it, it will looking into amplifiers. Uh, they right, should so, actually not sound, but they do. They have their right, own signature. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the the question is, people say, do DACs sound different? And why do they sound different? The the short answer that I give, and tell me if I'm right or wrong, or if, you know what the nuance is. The answer is they should sound the same. However, they don't, and they don't sound the same. Uh, and it's not necessarily but because of the difference in the DAC chips. It's really the implementation of the system as a whole to produce that analog output that's sent to the amplifier. So how close am I to truth with that answer? I think that is actually spot on. So that also okay. explains why there is a difference. Even when you have the same chipset, but used in a different way, you get different results. Uh, just to give you that example, all these power supplies, they are there for a reason. If you just only use a couple of power supplies, you just parallel everything and then expect the chipset to perform the same, it's not going to happen. It is very critical. And the essence of the music um, actually comes not from the large signal swings, but it's in those little tiny details that's around the edges of the signal again. So in the small, Parts is where the difference is how these DACs sound. And that's exactly the the part that is where our ears and brain especially is the most sensitive to. So that is where you will hear, for instance, the violin somewhere. But if you have all the harmonics just 100% right, then you know, ah, this is a Stradivarius, you know? Right. And that is such a tiny little thing where and that makes it so extremely difficult but also so extremely nice and interesting as a field because in the tiniest little things you can make huge differences whereas in the large things you can actually not really make that much difference right on. well thank you for the 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 description and of of why the chip and the implementation and and really how this thing as a whole uh can you know make a nice product or one that's not so nice. And I've heard DACs that are not so nice, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. And this, this helps understand uh, why that is so. 